And still in British Columbia, the International Longshore and Warehouse Union has served a second 72-hour strike notice. The union renewed its strike yesterday, but this morning, the Canada Industrial Relations Board ruled the walkout was illegal. Workers pulled down their pickets after that decision. Still, it's another day lost for anyone counting on all the goods now stuck at the ports. For more, let's bring in the CBC's uh, Georgie Smythe, who is at the Port of Vancouver right now. So, Georgie, what's going on uh, there behind you? Yeah, well, there have been developments aplenty in the Port of Vancouver today. As you said, port workers were striking briefly until this morning when those pickets came back down after the Canada Industrial Relations Board ruled that the work stoppage was illegal because the union hadn't given them 72-hour notice. Uh, the Minister of Labour even went to the trouble of sharing that news on Twitter this morning. I'm going to step out of the frame now uh, for a live shot of Canada's most important port, as you can see, uh, no containers moving again today. Uh, but that doesn't mean, hopefully, that there's not a lot of work going on behind the scenes to solve this crisis. We did hear from the Employers Association a short time ago via a statement. Uh, it confirmed the union had now issued a second 72-hour strike notice uh, to tell them that another work stoppage would happen on Saturday. Uh, the, stop the statement also included details about the agreement that was presented to them by the federal mediator last week, uh, which included a 19.2% increase on wages over four years. Now, we spoke to an industrial relations expert earlier this morning about why the association is talking to the media when everyone is hoping that they'll be back at that bargaining table. If they're talking to the media, they're not negotiating. Back in the days when we had these three-day strikes, everybody went back to work. They knew what was going to happen. It was all very, very uh, orchestrated. And uh, so now uh, that, that pattern has been, uh, has been broken. I, I think in the end that, you know, the minister has made up his mind that uh, they're going to act and they're working on what, just what that will be. And Georgie, we know businesses say this is becoming really disruptive. What are you hearing about that? Yeah, well, unsurprisingly, many business associations around the country, and premiers included, are, are very upset about this ongoing uncertainty. Uh, as, as you've seen, no one is working at the port behind me right now, and it is unclear how long this second looming work, work stoppage might last for. Uh, we've been speaking to the Vancouver uh, Board of Trade about the impact of this on the economy. It had estimated that these work stoppages, or the previous 13-day work stoppage, had cost the economy $9.7 billion in trade. Uh, they believe the strike prevented an estimated 60,000 containers from coming into BC ports. And if this work stoppage uh, went until the end of the month, that that number could rise to a quarter of a million containers, uh, all, uh, you know, um, gate, all um, in the in the in the port, not coming in, not being brought in by those workers. Uh, so there, are of course, of course, calls for workers to um, have to be legislated back to work. We did hear from BC's Premier David Eby, and he does not support that action. I, I can't help but feel that uh, that whatever is separating the parties is not worth this disruption. They've got to sort it out at the table as quickly as possible. So the union has told us today that it is willing to go back to that bargaining table as soon as possible, but we really have no idea uh, as of right now as to where those bargaining negotiation talks are, and we're also not sure when those workers will be back at work. Andrew? Georgie, thank you. That is the CBC's Georgie Smythe, live in Vancouver.